everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about shock, specifically the stages of shock. So let's get into it. So first things first, what is shock, right? So there is a decrease in tissue perfusion which can impair cellular function, and if we don't do anything about it, will eventually lead to organ failure and even death. So the many types of shock, many causes, which I'll talk about in other videos, um, but in general, the thing they have in common is a lack of oxygen, okay? So this lack of oxygen is what's causing the decreased perfusion to the tissues, right? Because the tissues are not getting enough oxygen. So if it's caught early on, we can treat it, we can reverse it. If it's not done so, then this is life-threatening, the patient could die. And then the four stages, that's what we're gonna talk about here in this video. And so what's happening in the body in the initial, compensatory, progressive, and refractory stages. In the initial stage of shock, the patient might not have any obvious signs or symptoms because a lot of the damage that's being done is done at the cellular level. So what is that damage? What's happening at that cellular level? So doesn't matter the type of shock, hypovolemic shock, septic shock, etc. What's going to happen is there's going to be low cardiac output. So blood is not going to be pumped adequately enough throughout the body. So low cardiac output is going to lead to low perfusion. Perfusion is the bringing of oxygenated blood to our tissues and our organs. So all of that is going to be decreased. And that's what's going to start causing a lot of issues. So if our tissues and organs are not being well oxygenated, the body is going to go into survival mode, right? It's going to say, okay, I'm going to switch the way I metabolize. So when you are getting oxygen to your tissues and organs normally, we use aerobic metabolism. But in this case, when that's not happening, the body goes, okay, I need to make a change. I don't have the oxygen I'm used to, so now I'm going to use anaerobic metabolism. And this is what causes lots of other problems. So anaerobic metabolism makes lactic acid as a waste product. Now, in general, everybody has lactic acid. Even when you're not in shock, right? Normal, healthy people produce lactic acid. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because your liver knows how to handle it, okay? In shock, your liver is not being well oxygenated, so it's not working properly, so it's not able to keep up and handle the lactic acid and manage it like it's supposed to. And because it can't manage the lactic acid, levels of lactic acid build up in your bloodstream. So increased levels of lactic acid in the blood decrease your pH, right? Because they make you more acidic and it makes the patient acidotic. The compensatory stage is next, and this is when the body starts to recognize like, oh my gosh, all of these changes are happening, we've just switched to anaerobic metabolism, we have all this extra lactic acid, this is not good, we need to fix the problem. So the goal of the compensatory stage is to increase cardiac output. So these are the ways the body tries to increase cardiac output. So the first thing we're going to do is hyperventilate. So. <gasps> like breathing like that. Why? Because we don't have enough oxygen and we're trying to get more oxygen into the body. The next thing that will happen is the sympathetic nervous system, which is gonna be primarily focused on increasing your blood pressure. So we're getting more oxygen in and we're gonna increase our blood pressure and our heart rate, which is gonna increase our cardiac output. So how does it do that? It will release catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine, because they are vasoconstrictors. So when you have constricted blood vessels, right, the more narrow they are, the higher the blood pressure. So that's how that's going to help increase the blood pressure. Other body systems, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Angiotensin II is going to be released. That's really helpful in this case because it's also a vasoconstrictor. So it's going to help increase the blood pressure. 
it also is going to release aldosterone. And if we remember aldosterone, what does it do? It's a hoarder, right? So it hoards sodium and water for the kidneys. So we increase retention of sodium and water, which will lead to an increase in blood volume. So now we have more blood volume, our blood vessels are constricted, we have more oxygen. So these are helpful things in increasing our cardiac output. And then the final thing that happens is the pituitary gland notices what the kidneys are doing. It's like, hey, why are we holding on to all this extra sodium and water? There must be an issue. I should help. I should help by hoarding water too. So the pituitary gland makes more antidiuretic hormone, which keeps more water in the body, more fluid, which also contributes to an increase in blood volume. So all of these are actually very helpful things that the body does to compensate for the patient being in shock. In the progressive stage, all of those wonderful things that the body was doing in the compensatory stage start to fail because those things are really helpful, but they're not meant to last forever, right? They're temporary. So in the progressive stage, the patient is progressively getting worse. So kind of similar to the initial stage, we're starting to see that decrease in cardiac output, which leads to decrease in perfusion and decrease in overall oxygenation. That anaerobic metabolism is now increased, so the patient becomes worse and worse in their metabolic acidosis. There's a decrease in oxygen to the brain, which can cause mental status changes in the patient. So they can be confused, they can be um, unconscious even. They might go into DIC, having dysrhythmias, and ARDS, so acute respiratory distress syndrome. Symptoms we'll see, increased respiratory rate, decreased oxygen, obviously, right? Um, we'll hear crackles in their lungs, and these patients are very, very sick. They're going to be probably put on a ventilator, okay, to help them breathe because they're having such a hard time. So in the progressive stage, things are getting much, much worse. Then our final stage is the refractory stage. So up until this point, a lot of bad things are happening in the body, but we can help, right? We can help treat the patient if we catch it early on in one of these earlier stages. By the time we get to the refractory stage, we can't really do anything. So at this point, the damage is too severe shock cannot be reversed in this stage. So what ultimately is going to happen, organ failure will occur and then eventually death. The patient will not survive once they've reached the refractory stage. So that's my video on shock and the four stages of shock. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.